Hi everyone, it's Stephanie Weaver here in the Blue and Yellow Kitchen in San Diego uh, under stay-at-home orders like most of the country and I've got a special guest today, Jean Sauvage is here from Seattle. Hi Jean. Hi. And we're going to be making her gluten-free ch amazing chocolate chip cookies from Gluten-Free Wishlist, her incredible book that I um, reviewed a few years back and then eventually bought my own copy of because everything was so delicious. And the um, the subtitle is Sweet and Savory Treats You've Missed the Most. And I can really vouch for how much uh, work Jean did to really make these recipes work and really replicate. Because um, any if any of you have tried gluten-free stuff, you may have said, oh, that's nothing like regular and I would never want to eat that. And Jean's been gluten-free for a really long time, is one of the expert gluten-free bakers that I know. So I'm really thrilled to have you here today. Thanks for being here. And um, so my oven is preheated to 350, which is 180 centigrade. And you can make this recipe with regular flour. Jean's going to walk us through it. And then we're going to share um, a link to her website, the art of gluten free baking.com, where she has two very similar recipes to this. We don't actually have her mission to share the, the super specifics of this recipe from this book. But what you are can we make. Making? We're making chocolate chip cookies. Woohoo! Classic chocolate chip cookies. And Microwave Boy there is overexcited right. because it's the end of Lent and he is ready for some cookies. Let's go. Let's go. Do you right. want to know a secret about this recipe? Yes, please. It, so it was based for me on my memory of famous Amos cookies. So oh. as a kid, I loved famous Amos cookies. So nice. that's the taste sensation I was going Awesome. For. Yeah, and so that's something like as both of us are recipe developers, you know, we will have a food memory or we'll try something someplace and we'll say, oh man, I'd really love to have that gluten-free or I'd really love to have that again. And then we can be very kind of obsessive about <laughs> trying to get to that point. So what it's I just true. did is I'm measuring the flour and I, I put a piece of wax paper down and I very lightly scooped or spooned it into the, um, the one cup measure. I'm making a half recipe of these cookies just so there's not 50 of them in the house. Um, although we would be happy to eat 50 of them. And then I use the back flat end of a knife to, to level it up because it's really important to measure by volume but not overpack flour in the, in the container. So we've got one cup of flour in there. And then the other dry ingredients, remind me what they are, Jean? Uh, they're baking soda. Okay. And salt. Baking soda and salt, okay. And so, um, so one of the things we were just talking about was um, baking soda versus baking powder. Baking powder apparently already has an acid in it that makes it automatically work when it gets wet, whereas baking soda does not, so there needs to be an acid in the recipe. Did I get that right? Yeah, so baking powder basically is baking soda with an acid, so it's self-activating once water hits it. Okay. Baking soda needs an acid um, plus water to activate it. And one of the things that I've found with baking soda is there often will be these very little tiny clumps that if you're not super careful to get out end up meaning you taste that baking soda in there. So I always sift it through like a tea strainer or something just because I'm a little bit sort of anal retentive about things. And then I'm going to put, so this was one cup of flour, a uh, half, half teaspoon of baking soda, half a teaspoon of sea salt. And then I'm going to whisk those things together, right? So I have make sure it's all mixed evenly before I start my wet ingredients, correct, Jean? Right. And she's walking yeah. me through. I pre-measured most of it, but she's actually walking me through the recipe. All right, so that's, you want it all. I, some recipes I would say you want it all one color, but these ingredients were all very similar, so you can't really tell. But you just want to whisk it around just to make sure that you've got all that mixed in because you don't want a very salty section or a section without the baking soda, which is the leavening making the cookies rise. Okay, right. next step, we're, uh, is it butter is the next step? Yeah, unsalted butter at room temperature. Okay, and why room temperature? I wanted to ask you about that. Well, it needs to be whipped with the sugars, and so cold butter is really hard to whip. Yeah, I mean, it's hard to mix together. You can do it, it's just gonna be harder on your arm. 
Okay. So room temperature, it's going to be softer. It's just going to mix with the, the sugars better. Okay. So I'm going to try to get this. Uh, it's a little clumpy. It has been sitting out for a couple hours, but it's kind of chilly in our house because we're having rain today. Lots and lots of rain. Um, and you can use a strong um, wooden spoon to mix them together if you need. Yeah. So normally I probably would do this with my... Um, my stand mixer, but um, that's loud and also most people don't have them, so I'm doing it the old fashioned way. So, and then our two sugars are granulated sugar, right? And brown? Okay, so what I do when I'm measuring granulated sugar, so the thing with baking is you do need to be pretty precise because the recipes are designed for, it's chemistry. Um, and so there's not a, as much leeway as with regular kind of stews or whatever. So I usually just kind of shake it in the bag to level it off and then throw it in. And then the brown sugar um, is needs to, you said this is the acid, that's considered an acid and that's what activates the baking soda? Correct. Okay. Weirdly. I know. Weirdly, I yeah. Another, yeah. I would never know that. another acid that Ooh, can activate. Okay. And so it's, it's, it's weird. brown sugar needs to be packed, right? I don't know if you can see me, Jean, but... Um, so, so lightly packed for lightly this Lightly packed, okay. So what I do then is I stick the whole thing in there, and then I'm using my fingers to just kind of shove it in, but not super firmly. Does Correct. That, does that look about right? Yeah, that should be okay. good. So got our, got our packed, and you'll and see... I, go ahead. Oh, I was going to say, I tend to like dark brown sugar, but light brown is fine okay. as well. Oh, good. Okay. Well, that's what I had. So I ended up, so we yeah. have a local, and then I'm just beating these together, right, with a wooden spoon? Correct. The, In the, the sugars and the butter. Okay. So, um, yeah, so we have a local restaurant that uh, a couple weeks ago, pretty quickly when this all started happening, they pivoted to selling groceries. And so, um, this was, that's can, been happening here too. Yeah. yeah. And so I ordered, like, I normally don't even have regular sugar in the house, but I'm like, I'm going to be baking a lot more. So I ordered brown sugar. I ordered, they have really fancy chocolate chips. I ordered nice. a big thing of regular sugar to make sure I didn't run out of sugar so I could keep us in sweets. Um, exactly. And, you know, that's important. <laughs> um, yeah. And of course, you know, I'm very grateful that we have that option and, um, and that we have food and uh, you're you know, helping to support a local. Yeah. Business. And we're helping to support a local business. So right, rather right. than, um, you know, having to, you know, have a shopper be at risk, I can order it and then go pick it up and pay them and, you know, a little extra and they put it in my right. car. And so it's just a nice way. Okay, so I think this is, is that pretty reasonable? Does it have to be super fluffy, Jean, or is that? No, I, I mean, okay. just so you know, another, another thing that is of interest is that leaveners work on existing air bubbles, oh. so okay. um, they don't create air bubbles necessarily on their own. So with a cake, you're going to want to do much more beating because you're, you're going to want to create air bubbles in the sugar butter mixture. Okay, and so that in that case, you would want to do a hand mixer or a stand mixer if you have it to get more air into the mixture. But because cookies that's are, what I like, yeah. cookies are but flat. For cookies, they're flat. Yeah, <laughs> so we don't have to work as hard, which is good. Okay, right. so my next ingredients are the milk, eggs, and vanilla. The is that right? Yeah, so it's basically vanilla and milk, and then vanilla add those milk. until they're well okay. combined. Right, so. And then you add the eggs. Okay. The eggs last, yeah. So small amount of vanilla, small amount of milk. I don't have regular milk in the house, so we've got almond milk is what we've got. Uh, I use coconut milk. She uses so coconut that's milk, fine. so why, yeah. Why do the eggs go last? Why do the eggs go last, Jean? Microwave boy wants to know. You know, I yeah, I have found that I like to put the milk in. Uh, so normally I do sugar and butter together, and then I do vanilla, and then I do the eggs. And I think um, the rationale from a million years ago, if I'm re remembering correctly, is that the 
vanilla coats the sugar butter mixture and then the eggs kind of coat that whole mixture and somehow that felt like the right thing to do. I'm not sure. I can't remember anymore why that was important at that particular time that it's become my routine now. Right, so cookie science. Mm, cookie science. Yeah, and then the milk is different. Most chocolate chip cookie recipes don't require milk, but I found that it helped to make the particular consistency I wanted for this particular recipe. Okay. Good to know. So I just put my egg in. Um, yeah. So your recipe in the book calls for one extra large egg, and I'm making a half yeah. recipe. So this is a very small looking to me large egg. So it might be a little bit cakier than, uh, than if I was making a full recipe with an XL egg. But again, it's cookies. They're going to be fine. Yeah. And in the, in the book, I, me I actually, for this, the purpose of this book, I measured extra large eggs, and they are roughly a quarter cup, oh, so um, you know. can actually uh, whip it in a, in a measuring cup, and then pour out uh, an eighth of a cup, basically half, and you get yeah. half the recipes. Well, that's good to know. All right, so I think we're looking good for the flour edition, right? Does that look good? Uh, I think so, okay. yeah. Okay, yeah. All right, so we're adding our flour mixture, and so we're very close to cookies, people. So what was in the flour bowl again? So it was uh, the gluten-free, all-purpose, all one-to-one baking mix, baking soda, and a little bit of sea salt. And it's important to um, mention that you use not a baking mix per se, but a, a flour blend. Flour blend, um, yeah, sorry. I, I have had people in the past use like a baking mix for flour, and of course a baking, an actual baking mix has leaveners and salt and things oh, like right. that. Oh, right, yeah, sorry. And so then their recipe turns out crazy. I don't know what, what happened. <laughs> yeah. I don't know how people do that, but... Yeah, so that's, that's the thing to be... Well, aware of is if you're you know like especially like nowadays right so maybe you right. ask for your shopper if you're not going yourself to buy you something and they'll call you and they'll say oh you know we don't have they don't have that do you want this instead so you just you know when you whatever ends up at your house or if you're the one in right. the store you just need to read the package to make sure that if there's already baking soda or baking powder in it, that means it's self-rising and you would then need to adjust your recipe. Okay, so I've got my, my flour incorporated. And then okay. the last two things are the one cup of chocolate chips for this half recipe and uh, a quarter cup of chopped toasted walnuts. Now tell me, I thought this was really interesting. Now I know it was because you probably were trying to replicate the famous Amos, but yeah. I thought I thought it was interesting that these are, when I made them last week, that the nuts are really more like a textural element as opposed to like they're not like, it's not like a walnut and chocolate chip cookie recipe. Is that what you were going for? Um, well, I'm not sure what you mean by a walnut and chocolate chip cookie recipe, but um, the toasted, why I toast nuts is because they the flavor comes out okay. more, and then you're right, they do end up having a textural element. There's a further issue for me, I have a very weird allergy that makes me allergic to all raw fruits, vegetables, nuts, and spices, so I have to have them extra cooked. Oh, okay. Well, what I meant is that uh, I would normally expect to see like at least a cup of nuts or maybe as many nuts as chocolate chips. And so I thought, huh, that's interesting that there's a lot less nuts. And I wondered oh, if right, it was right. more, yeah. um, more to have it be sort of for texture as opposed to a, real, a lot of flavoring. So I've got a prepared cookie sheet and this recipe calls for one tablespoon of batter. So of course, if you have a tablespoon, you could just use that, which is the normal way most people make cookies, totally fine. I like to use a little, uh, a small um, spatula or other spoon to push it out. But once I started getting more serious about my baking, I decided I would invest, and these don't cost very much. They're, I don't know, five or six bucks. This is a one tablespoon size scoop. I'm holding it so Jane can see too. And this right. just makes everything just so much more fun. Uh, it's quicker to do. Uh, what I like to do is I like to, you know, fill it 
kind of level it on the back side with my little spatula and then you just flip it out and then you're going to get all your cookies are going to be the same size and one of the reasons that yeah. that's important is that that means they're going to bake evenly and so while it also means oh they look nice and they're pretty right. um, they also bake evenly and it is important like when you're making let's say roll out shape cookies you want to bake all the shapes on one sheet uh, because otherwise you know a much smaller you know candy cane or whatever might burn you know before the uh, big Christmas trees are done this shows you that I come from that heritage but um, and that's something that I just never really thought about before I got more serious about baking so I'm going to do this this makes about two uh, two dozen cookies the half recipe and so I'm going to do one sheet and then we will take a brief break and uh, so you can see the final product because of course you want to see the final cookies. Um, so basically we're going to go ahead and I'm, I'm just going to pause here and then 15 minutes later we've got cookies. Yay! Woo! Very exciting. So um, I just pulled them out of the oven. So they, you can see that they, I'm going to hold them so Jean, oh, Jean can see them as well. Oops. Oops. All right, well, they flew right off the parchment paper, so they clearly aren't sticking, which is awesome. They're flying my way. They're flying, they're flying. Right. <laughs> my boy was sucking them over with his magnetic attraction. Um, so we've got some nice, uh, because the butter was nice and soft, we do have that nice spread that you want to see with chocolate chip cookies. They're really nice and golden brown on the edges. You've got, we've got nice distribution of the chocolate chips. I'm going to set that down because it is hot. And then I'm going to pick one of these up. So do you have any final um, tips, Jean, in terms of gluten-free baking or cookies or anything while I'm kind of blowing on this? Oh, let me let me do a, here, do you want to come in a little tight on the cookie? I'm going to show everybody how like gooey it is, hopefully without burning my hands. Oops. That's my favorite. Oh, yeah, very nice. Very nice, uh, very nice goo situation here. Hot. Nice. For sure hot. That's the second batch. We'll be ready in a couple minutes. So um, last, so Jean's book is Gluten-Free Wishlist. Uh, you definitely, or if you're a gluten-free person, this is the cookbook to buy. Um, everything from, you know, if you want to learn how to make croissants and uh, laminated dough to what else? You, you've got all kinds of savory stuff, onion rings, chocolate cake on the cover, whoopie pies, bagels, fried chicken. Ramen ramen, I mean, any food that you could possibly be missing, she's got a recipe for. And I can tell you, I probably made five or 10 when I first got the book for my review. Every single thing I made, um, not only did it all come out beautifully, but Jean is such a great teacher that I just felt like, oh, I can do this. I would never have thought to try making croissants. <laughs> but I was like, well, I'm gonna, because Jean says I can do it, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try. And I made them for my friend's birthday party um, who was, uh, who's a celiac, and um, she was so excited to have, I think I made the cheese straws, I think that's what it was, or some kind of oh, yeah. cheese component. Oh, okay. So, they definitely taste like Famous Amos, from what I remember of Famous Amos. Yeah. Very light texture. I guess just a hint of the nut, so it really is, like I said, more of a sort of a textural element. Of course, the who doesn't love chocolate chips unless you don't like chocolate? And they're nice and crispy on the outside. So you get that really nice, you can see that they got really good browning. They're just a delightful texture. It's a A plus, even though I made them. Jean's recipe, A plus. <laughs> so tell us where, awesome. go ahead, tell us where we can find you, Jean. So mm -hmm. I'm artofglutenfreebaking.com and I'm also, I have an Art of Gluten Free Baking community on Facebook if you want to mm -hmm. join. I am 4Chickens on Instagram and 4Chickens on Twitter. Uh, you may, if you're a longtime follower, I used to have a blog called 4Chickens because I have chickens in my Four backyard. Chickens. But <laughs> so I switched to Art of Gluten Free Baking when I started getting serious about um, developing gluten free baking recipes. Awesome. And follow me, S. Weaver MPH. If you enjoyed this video, please share it so other people can learn how to make these fantastic cookies. Thanks so much, Jean, for being with us, and look forward to seeing you all soon. Stay well, stay home, wear your masks. We love you guys. Bye.
Thank you. Bye-bye.